Well, hello there. It's Paul here from the Irish Astronomical Association and the Irish Federation of Astronomical Societies. And uh, we're going to have a look at what's going on this week because it is International Dark Sky Week from this Sunday, the 19th of April through to the 26th on Saturday. And it's looking like actually the skies are pretty good. Now, one of the great benefits of, of this awful lockdown thing. One is we don't have to go anywhere to look at the sky, um, but also the skies are very, very clear. And this is the view from my house today, looking through a fisheye lens. Um, and you see that there are no clouds, no aircraft and no contrails. Um, the sky is very, very good. Um, there probably will be a bit of haze later on because this is all brought about by high pressure and that's uh, generally how, how that goes. But uh, the skies are looking quite promising. Certainly looking at my forecast here, I would say we're probably okay for the next three nights. Um, so um, that's almost unheard of in, here, here in Northern Ireland um, to get uh, that amount of clarity. Uh, we've actually not had rain uh, since the 17th of March, and this being the 19th of April, that's probably pretty close to being a record. And it doesn't look like there's going to be any rain for another week or so as well, maybe a little bit of cloud, but that's it. So uh, let's have a look at a few things that we can actually see while this is happening. Now we'll start here by uh, looking towards the west and southwest um, once it gets dark. Now that's not really till about 10 o'clock this time of year, so we'll start our observing at, uh, at 10 in the evening. And what we'll see is that the constellations of winter are fading away um, into the twilight now. Um, Orion, you might just about catch uh, Betelgeuse, back to its former self by the way. Um, sinking in the west just after the sunset. Um, you'll see Taurus, you might catch the Seven Sisters as well, but again, the twilight is intruding on the views of those. Um, uh, Gemini and Auriga, fairly clear still for a while. And um, of, of course, Venus is the jewel in the crown at the moment. Venus is very, very beautiful, very bright, magnitude minus 4.7, um, which is pretty much as bright as it gets. Now, looking at Venus through even a pair of binoculars, you don't even need a telescope particularly for this one, but binoculars um, would, would show you that Venus has a very nice phase on it. In fact, it's going into the crescent phase. And what will happen between now and sort of the middle of May, if we watch the little bit of video I've made here, um, that um, that phase will get thinner, but also because it's moving towards us, Venus will appear bigger. Um, and actually some people when it gets to the very big end of that phase, some people can actually see that crescent with the unaided eye. Um, my wife is one, I, I can't see it myself. Um, so that's Venus looking fantastic. Now looking to the south, we see a very sure sign that we're in spring, and that is the familiar shape of the constellation Leo. Um, starting with the, uh, the bright star Regulus at the bottom right hand corner, um, then a sort of backwards question mark, which is the front part of the lion. And then sort of looking to the left of that, we'll see uh, in the back of the lion. I do think that Leo really is one of those constellations that does in fact look like what it's supposed to be, Leo the lion. Um, brilliant constellation, and uh, we'll have a look around a couple of bits of that more closely. Now, looking below the hind legs of Leo, that's, um, that's where the famous Leo triplet collection of three galaxies is located. Now, very difficult to see, but you, you certainly will need a telescope to see anything at all. Um, but um, a wide field camera image will generally show them up um, with high ISO, like 3200, 6400. Um, and, a, and a fairly long exposed, the longest you can get, which is a, with a 50 millimeter equivalent lens, about 12 seconds. Um, they show up as three faint smudges generally, so that's, um, that's well worth looking at. Now, if we look a little bit further to the left of Leo, um, you see a bright star further down in the sky, which is called Spiker, first magnitude star Spiker. Um, in between the back of Leo and that part of the sky is a fairly dark looking part of the sky, but actually when you look more closely at it, it's absolutely chock full of galaxies. Now you'll need a telescope to see any of these, but actually it's a, it's a very photography rich area as well. And uh, uh, with a moderate telephoto lens and a tracking mount, you can actually see uh, very many 
galaxies there, including Markarian's chain and the eyes. Um, and uh, we'll be looking at that um, sometime during the next few days, I hope. I'm hoping to get some pictures of that area of the sky. So that'll be good. So now we come to what may be the highlight of the uh, International Dark Sky Week. Remember, this week is chosen because there is no moon in the sky during it. So uh, um, the sky should be good and dark. And um, with the weather forecast, we're, we're looking at some clear skies for a lot of the time as well. Um, so um, looking sort of northeastwards uh, towards well, the northeast and east, um, we see the two main stars of the Summer Triangle, Deneb and, and Vega, uh, rising above the horizon. And just above Vega in the constellation Lyra is where the radiant of the Lyrid meteor shower is to be found. And uh, we're hoping that, uh, uh, that we'll be able to see some shooting stars. So I'm going to try and get some photos of the meteors over the next uh, couple of nights or so when it's clear. Um, and um, I've just done a little guide to uh, have my setup here. So here's my setup. It's very, very simple. I've put the camera on the tripod um, and I've got a very straightforward lens there, a 20mm f1.7. Now this is a micro four thirds camera, so that equates to about 40 millimeters um, in the old 35 millimeter thinking. So it's a very slightly wide angle lens and that's really great for meteor photography. I'll be pointing this up at uh, uh, to one side or other of the radiant uh, later tonight. That is to say I'm not going to point it directly at where the meteors come from because I probably won't get any meteors that way but if you go to one side or the other or above or below um, about sort of 30 degrees let's say a little bit to one side or the other um, and uh, a bit off axis then you may capture some meteors. Now I've set this to do 10 second exposures and I've set the built-in intervalometer to fire off uh, uh, regularly um, at every 10 seconds. Um, I keep the exposure short because although you get more star depth um, if you do longer exposures, uh, the thing is with meteors that they're a very short duration and so you want to, that to be as much of the exposure as possible. And there's an argument in favour of doing one second exposures, but then you wouldn't actually get anything else in the sky. Um, so, you know, that's, I, I compromise on that. Ten seconds is good. So, happy observing, happy shooting. Enjoy International Dark Sky Week and stay safe. <laughs>